and so they asked me to define it. So I asked the question, what if hundreds of creative women photographers in 100 plus countries document their private space in daily lives during COVID-19? And well, I mean, of course, I never thought that so many people would like to participate, but I expected maybe 50 or 60. But only after a few days, we quickly became 400 plus. Yeah, and so I think the big interest showed how much we uh, needed one another during these times. And yeah, Hannah and I created um, basically the whole, the journals through video calls and online documents and then WhatsApp messages and I mean, just online. And I think, yeah, ever since it has become probably one of the biggest collective photography projects running now nearly since three months. Podcasting for the Art Gallery of Mississauga, this is Border Crossings, a podcast where we listen to stories and experiences from artists, innovators, community activators, and people living creative lives. I'm your host, Vassandra, and I can't wait to unpack the magic of Border Crossings with you. Are you curious about living a creative life fearlessly? Then hang tight for a dose of inspiration. Hi, Charlotte, and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me here. Oh, thank you for making time for this. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, all um, good here in Berlin. I'm sitting in my apartment. It's nice outside and happy to talk to you. How are you? Oh, I'm good too. Thanks. Thank you so much. So, Charlotte, I'm wondering how are things there for you? professionally and personally with this whole pandemic and social distancing and all of that? Well, I mean, I think now things are getting better, but for sure in mid-March, like, you know, every job, every, I mean, opportunity which was coming up in these months were cancelled. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, but I mean, I readjusted a bit and worked, I mean, like many others, much more online, rather in, in online communication than in photography. That was a bit more difficult mm-hmm. and um, initiating a project. And um, yeah, things have been okay, actually. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to take a couple of steps back because I'm still amazed that you speak six languages tell me about that (laughs) (laughs) um well i don't i i think for a few of them i didn't do too much like so i grew up in the danish minority in the very north of germany where i learned danish and um i mean bridging between two cultures and languages from a very early age and I think that actually has had sparked my you know, interest in traveling and learning other languages. So when I was 18, for instance, I moved to Ecuador for an exchange year. And later I work, uh, lived in um, Turkey for three years where, yeah, I immersed myself in the languages and cultures. So that's how I picked up all the languages. That's just wonderful. And our project and the show, it- is all about border crossings. And it sounds to me like you have just crossed so many borders and immersed yourself in so many different cultures and experiences. I'm gonna ask you a tough question, which is your favorite language? Wow, that is a difficult question. Mm, I would maybe say Spanish actually. Whereas Turkish is such a beautiful language, and I love Turkish, but it's quite difficult. (laughs) Um, But I think Spanish, because I do connect it to a lot of family and friends, and and, um, yeah, Spanish. Thank you for making that difficult choice and sharing it with us. Um, So Charlotte, why did you choose to be a documentary photographer? Hmm. I think that also has something to do maybe how I grew up in those two cultures and like living outside of Germany since also at quite an early age. So, um, yeah, those experiences did have a profound impact on my sense of identity. And um, when I want, was younger, I always wanted to study political science and maybe even becoming a, a politician. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but at one point um, I fell in love with photography and um, went to a lot of exhibitions. And 
well, just listen to my gut feelings actually to study documentary photography. And well, and then I quickly realized as well that I can be political with photography as well. So I think that's how I started. Yeah. What inspires you to keep going? This sounds like a really tough job. So I'm just wondering what inspires you? Well, I think many, many things, but probably mostly the people I meet through photography, the friendships I make and well, everything I learn along the way. And um, definitely something which also inspires me, which maybe sound weird, but being outside of my own comfort zone, which, um, yeah, which is often equivalent with like pushing boundaries or like trying to challenge perceptions. And I think that's what I love uh, doing with my own photography, but also as a person, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah. And then I think another, um, um, yeah, important motivation for me, yeah, being a photographer is that women are misrepresented and underrepresented in almost all forms of media. And with my works, I, I love to work with this these kind of issues and um yeah it's a lot about challenging perceptions amplifying voices so that definitely keeps me going could you talk about your favorite project a project that's closest to your heart yes so um if i i think the one which is closest to my heart is probably probably la puente which is a project about women working in the largest brothel in southern ecuador and um, well, the majority of sex workers are women, but most visual projects or photography projects, art projects are done by men. And I do think that they often fail to show how the women uh, want to be seen. And that brothel, um, I, I know it since I was 18 years old and when I was living in the city as an exchange student in Ecuador. And well, one day we were driving out of the city and I mean, banana plantations were starting and and there was suddenly a, a like a huge traffic jam and which really surprised me and when i asked like for its reason and my friends were laughing and saying well that's our brussel the largest in the province and and so that moment really had an impact on me and i always wanted to um go inside and see how the lives of the women are but i mean back then i wasn't a photographer or, or artist and um so i started 10 years later i always remembered this situation so 10 years later i while visiting friends i started um interviewing the women and well ever since hundreds of polaroids and videos were created and yeah, so I'm. Uh, it's 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 a work I'm 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 somehow connected to since long time, and and I have been photographing it between 2016 and um, well, actually now, like beginning of this year, and um, yeah, since then hundreds of Polaroids, yeah, videos, all of this, and and a, and a photo book was published with photo evidence. So that's my first photo book. So I do think that <laughs> for that this work is also so close to my heart, and yeah. So I want to take you back to that moment, uh, Charlotte, when you were 18 as an exchange student, you really didn't see this um, project sort of coming to you, right? And then you're you're in that moment again, where you're, you know, you've just crossed the banana plantations and your friends have just told you that this is the largest brothel. Now, hmm. can you recall, like, what were the questions that came to your mind at that point in time? You said you were curious. So what were the few questions? Well, I mean, I was shocked about how is a traffic jam even possible in front of Brussels? And and the main question well, was, how are the women feeling? How are their lives? And um, yeah, I think that was a, the immediate like main question. But also I understood very quickly because, I mean, um, I think everywhere in the world, but I mean, here in Germany, but also in, in Ecuador, I mean, men are more free than women. And um, I remember that we as women there, and then maybe especially as an exchange student, like we are not allowed to date. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, no dating, no kissing, no nothing. And 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 I always wondered, how's that? How, why is that different for me than for my male friends? And so this question actually from, yeah, from that time on always followed me. Like, you know, I mean, inequality, I mean, gender imbalance and, um, yeah. 
I'm sure it wasn't easy getting into this um, community of women and, you know, just getting them to open up or talk to you. So were there any borders that you experienced, like some kind of um, challenges that you experienced? Um, not actually, to be honest, not too many because so because I speak fluently Spanish and, and the accent from that region, because I know the culture very, very well, I think that was like giving me easily access and I mean, to the individual woman and, but also like, I mean, everyone in that city knows each other. So I was asking around, like if somebody knows one of the owners, because it's a family mm -hmm. business. And so mm -hmm. indeed someone did. So I quickly met, um, one of the owners and he was like, yeah, I mean, it's fine for us. You, you just have to ask the woman. So I did. And I think um, if being very honest and mm -hmm. explaining why the work, for instance, I want to do, I, why I feel it's important, mm -hmm. um, then usually people um, uh, open up and the same with, with the woman in La Puente. And, and um, maybe another aspect which made it um, easier to to really also photograph the woman is that I'm working a lot in participatory photography. So in mm -hmm. this project as well, I was using a Polaroid camera, and um, it's something else, you know. I mean, it, it even the moment when you take the photo, it creates it has some performative um, aspect nearly. I mean, you press the shutter, and then the image comes out, and like n no one knows how it's gonna end up being. And so, like people are holding it in their hands and or waving it, and so it creates a really nice and intimate moment already. Plus, mm -hmm. um, you can change the outcome. So the women there, they painted with a polish on their own Polaroids, which was in the beginning a form of providing anonymity. But then it changed to like a, a creative tool. So I think this combination of my background and the way how I approach photography or how I work um, in my art, I think, um, gave me access quite easily, I would say. I love Thanks. the way you described it, that they would hold the photograph in their hand and then wave it. And I like that you picked nail polish. Like I find that very interesting. Why did you pick that as like a, as a method of either, you know, adding to the photographs or uh, building on those photographs? Mm -hmm. So nail polish um, wasn't really planned when I started this project, but Polaroid was. And I do know from also previous work that you can exchange, I mean, that you can change the outcome of a Polaroid by, I mean, painting on it, writing on it, or yeah, or ripping something off. I mean, whatever you want to do with it. So, but when I was there um, and I started only by interviewing the woman and I had my Polaroid camera with me, I quickly realized that the women have to have the possibility to be anonymous and, um, and nail polish was around. So there was a woman having nail polish, so we were like, oh, let's just paint with that. And so that's how it started. In the beginning, it was only a red nail polish, for the first few photos. Um, and then I asked two women to buy nail polishes and I also bought nail polish. So I oh, had like a bag of nail polish. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it was planned the way mm -hmm. how I used it in the end. So it rather like developed together with the women and out of the situation. But, and much later actually, I realized um, how, wet, how, how bad, how good it actually fits together with the with the, uh, content, I mean, of the whole work, the body mm -hmm. of work, because nail polish is also such a synonym for like hyper femininity and, and yeah, I think we always um, connected rather to women and, um, and I love nail polish. <laughs> I mean, I use nail polish a lot myself, and, and now I'm doing it even for some more artworks. It's a great material, and I just love nail polish. Exactly. And when you sent me the video, and when I was looking through it, I kind of, I don't know for what reason, but it took me back to the first time that I, I painted my nails. And for mm -hmm. some, it, it just felt very moving. And that's why I was curious to ask you if, the, if it was planned. I must say, it's a beautiful coincidence or I'm, I'm so glad that this happened uh, for your project. Uh, Charlotte, this is taking me closer to understanding your process. Could you tell us um, what is your process like typically and how do you build a project? 
Um, I think that all projects are um, definitely interconnected with my life, as I just have been telling you about La Puente. That's one example. Like I don't search for projects, and and uh, yeah, and and that is probably maybe an outcome of um, me only or usually only working in places where I used to live or where I have a very close connection to. I mean, where I maybe speak the language, and um, I don't plan them and. Um, and sometimes I even don't understand why I'm doing them in the, in the beginning. So it's mm-hmm. just really out of a feeling <laughs> mm-hmm. or, or out of the people I meet. Um, but that's also for me, I think, the exciting way of working. And I don't want to know the outcome already when I start working on a project, maybe mm-hmm. not even understanding it. And mm-hmm. so that's also a part, um, one part why I'm also working a lot with participatory photography in my art because it's not planable, you know? I mean, I don't know the outcome necessarily. Yeah. Great work, really. I I just love the way you're describing this. It sounds to me like you, the project finds you and then you just surrender to it. It's blissfully, it doesn't even sound like you're, you know, you're too, too controlling about the outcome and things like that. And I think that's how great art is produced. So, um, it's just, it's just great. Now, Charlotte, I know you've been busy. Uh, I know that during the pandemic, you've been building this beautiful project, um, WP Journal. Could you tell us a bit more about this, the vision and the story? Yes, I can. So I think, mm, well, the journal is a collective project of I mean, supporting 400 plus women photographers worldwide documenting how they cope with the current pandemic and aftermath. Um, and while well, the idea actually developed mid-March when it yeah became evident that we are all, I mean, all photographers are losing our income and, and work opportunities and some were already living in isolation. And when um, Women Photograph Members, which is an initiative to elevate the voice of visual journalists, where, you know, just brainstorming on Facebook how we can support each other, I posted basically, why don't we do a collective um, photography project? And um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, a few people responded, yeah, let's do it. And and so they asked me to define it. So I asked the question, what if hundreds of creative women photographers in 100 plus countries document their private space in daily lives during COVID-19? And mm-hmm. well, I mean, of course, I never thought that so many people would like to participate, but I expected maybe 50 or 60. But only after a few days, we quickly became 400 plus. Um, Mm -hmm. And yeah, and from the very beginning, I teamed up uh, with Hannah Yoon, a Mm -hmm. photographer based in Philadelphia and now a friend. We we didn't uh, know each other before, but Mm -hmm. and... um, yeah, and so I think the big interest showed how much we uh, needed one another during these times. And yeah, Hannah and I created um, basically the whole the journals through video calls and online documents and then WhatsApp messages and I mean, just online. And I think, yeah, ever since it has become probably one of the biggest collective photography projects running now nearly since three months. Mm-hmm. And yeah. <laughs> All my respect and really hats off to you. To me, this is the ultimate border crossing experience because you've crossed technical boundaries, geographical boundaries, and also all of this to kind of give a platform for uh, female uh, photographers who are who could who would have just probably melted in into like an oblivion almost during this pandemic right so yeah all my respect to you thank you so much charlotte <laughs> and your partner um in this project hannah as well for putting this out there for uh, professionals and upcoming uh, professionals as well so mm-hmm. which brings me to my next question what is your message for upcoming documentary photographers just think about someone who's not yet so established what would you say to these uh, artists i would probably say that um they should really document or follow whatever ever they find is important to them not necessarily what is important to others i mean going through the world with open eyes and um 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 really important that we do what we love and that we do um, work on the issues which are important to us. And and I think everything else comes with it. I mean, I think trying out a lot of different methods is important. Um, reading, looking at art and photography books, and and just um, just doing it. I mean, just yeah, just photog- um, taking images and 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 questioning them and, and and our societies and trying to also challenge our societies i think it is um important that we do that yeah personally i like your approach pretty much you know pick it up and start you know experimenting and then building your practice i personally like that approach <laughs> um charlotte you've been really kind and you've shared so much with us I want to ask you, could you also share uh, some of the major turning points in your life as an artist in this world of participatory photography and documentary photography? Mm. Um, I think it was definitely discovering the beauty of working together with the people I photograph or with other people. I mean, really collaboration in its wider sense. And um, well, participatory really has ever since become an important method in my art because, you know, I think that it minimizes um, structures or like unbalanced structures that appear as a result of the uh, photographic process. And it allows to form a deeper deeper understanding of the people involved. And, And I think that was a turning po- point for sure when I realized that's how I want to work. I want to work in collaboration. I want to create, you know, projects. I mean, uh, like the journal, like like many of my personal projects in collab- collaboration with others. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. So what's next for you now? What's next for me? I mean, still a lot of uh, the journal. It's... um. It's, it's it's an ongoing quite a lot of uh, work because um now we have you know we're still like in the midst of the um, documentation but then um in the next uh, months uh, we want to focus on on exhibitions and maybe doing possibly a book so that's definitely still going on and um i invite everyone to to visit um the journal on instagram and Otherwise, um, I think maybe a bit of vacation. The last three months were really <laughs> intense and uh, I've been working full time. And so maybe a week of vacation would be good. And then then I actually definitely want to pick up my own um, I mean, camera and, and photograph myself again because I, I did miss that a bit in the last few months and probably doing a second chapter like La Puente in Ecuador doing a project about sex work in Germany, which again is interconnected as well. But I think that is what I'm going to do in the next few weeks and months. Well, I feel excited about your upcoming projects already, Charlotte. Thank you so much for making time for us and for sharing all these things with our listeners. Um, I, I definitely... I just wish more power to you and more power to your work. Thank you so much. It was so nice talking to you here. And it's my first podcast also, I must say. (laughs) Well, you, you sounded like a pro. Great stuff. Thanks for joining us on this episode. This podcast is an extension of the Border Crossings Project, a community engaged arts project funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation the Ontario Arts Council, and the city of Mississauga. Do you have a story to share with us? Are you living a creative life out there on your own? Well, I'm keen to hear from you. Write to me at agmconnect at mississauga.ca.